me up. All my 
life I've been called unworthy Named by the voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet Cause I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains And wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be Because I don't have to be The old man inside of me Cause his day is long dead and gone Because I've got a new name A new life, I'm not the same And I hope that will carry me home I am redeemed you set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed You set me free So I'll shake off these heavy chains Wipe away every stain I'm not who I used to be Oh God, I'm not who I used to be Jesus, I'm not who I used to be I am redeemed I thank God redeemed I am sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and he carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. The ransom from heaven Jesus Messiah Lord of all His body the bread His blood the wine Broken and poured out All for love the whole earth trembled and the veil was torn love so amazing love so amazing yeah. jesus messiah name above all Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the 
rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you that you are our, our Redeemer, you are our Messiah, and Lord, we thank you there is no end to your love. So, Father, we ask that tonight, Father, as we come into this place, that, Lord, as George comes to minister here in word, that, Father, that you'll minister in power. Father, we pray over our youth uh, as they're getting started, as well as their children. Lord, we don't want to have just a normal church service tonight. Father, come shake us up, Lord. Father, fire us up. Lord, let us see that, Father, there's, there needs to be an angst inside of us. There needs to be an unction to function. Lord, there needs to be this power that can't be put away that, Lord, we have to deal with it. And so, Lord, if that's to be, Lord, let it start right here at Impact Cowboy Church tonight. Lord, give us a hunger for the lost. Father, give us a hunger for the sick. Lord, give us a hunger for those that want to know more. Lord, give us a hunger for what you want, Lord. Father, as I uh, talked to a friend earlier and said, open my eyes and let me see what you have to see. Lord, I ask that you show us tonight, Father, through your word. Lord, we thank you for George Burns, that Lord, as he gets ready to come up here tonight for his faithfulness. And Lord, we ask that, Father, that you'll come speak in a mighty and powerful way in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. George, um, while George is making his way up here, first of all, I want to say thank you all to everybody that showed up to help us unload all the cleaning chemicals. I don't know if y'all saw or anything, but we received a major gift today. Um, normally for the cleaning chemicals that we spray in here to be able to help fight COVID, it's usually $125 a box plus $10 per shipping. Uh, we received about right at about 140 cases of that today. All right, so and it's to be used for the machine that sprays in here. Uh, how many of you know that COVID right now is back on the spread again? So we're fighting it tooth and nail right here. And as we got ready for that, and I also want you to ask any of your church friends, listen to me, any of your church friends here in Nacogdoches that I don't care what church they go to, I'd prefer that it be a Christian church, but if they need any of these cleaning chemicals, they have, what is it, Ron, 18, 18 pallets left? 18 pallets with 36 per pallet that they can go. We got almost three years worth of cleaning uh, stuff while we were there today in a horse trailer. So we can set it up to where they can get some more. We just want to know how can we bless other churches in our neighborhood. Amen. So guys, if y'all can help us out with that, we'd greatly appreciate it. George, I'm excited and can't wait. It's a yes and no thing. It's probably better for the machine, but it can be used um, in cleaning areas. But it's, I mean, it's an industrial thing, and what it does is supposed to be electrically uh, charged. That's it. All right, George. All right. Well, here we are. You know, uh, I was nearly ready to give this last last week, but uh, you know, I, I just felt like I needed to. I needed to wait. I almost kind of feel like the Lord showed me that today um, we're going to be over in Psalms 23 if you want to go ahead and turn there Psalm 
23. Should be up there. Yeah. Everybody ought to be pretty familiar with this one. So as we're studying the, the names of uh, the names of God, this one, and I may mess it up, but I don't see how I don't have four four letters in it there. Jehovah Roha, which means the Lord is my shepherd. And if you're familiar with Psalms 23, it's a psalm of David. I like the way um, uh, Ken put it here in this book. It says it speaks of faith. It speaks of a faith sobered by trials and a life mellowed and matured by the passing years. To be completely honest, and I, I, I have to say this, I, I nearly called Pastor Stan and said I couldn't do this today because I had a trial. I had an issue that distracted me. But I just remembered what Ken said about when David wrote this psalm. Said it speaks of faith sobered by trials and a life of that uh, uh, mellowed and matured by the passing of years. I'm just going to go ahead and read Psalms 23. I'm not going to dig into too much. I mean, the Lord, Lord and me has been talking all day. So you're familiar with it, but I'm going to read the entirety of this psalm, and then we're going to talk about it. Starting in verse 1, And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul that has been with me all day long. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I mean, that's, that's one I probably learned when I was a wee young in there, but you know, we, um, <laughs> nobody said life was going to be easy. And it wasn't easy for me today, but, you know, um, isn't, it, isn't it good to hear that God loves us? I mean, God, God loves his sheep so much that he himself will care for us and deliver us on our gloomy days. I had a gloomy day today, but I got through it thinking about this message. And it was like, how can I not get up here and give this message? Knowing what I've been through, knowing how he brought me out of it. Am I completely through it? No. But hey, it's going to be all right. So... I like how he breaks this down. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord will shepherd us when we're going through anything. Good times, bad times, whatever. It says here, It is my shepherd who makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. So David knew that, that he belonged to the Lord and it was that truth that gave him the greatest sense of strength. You know, uh, the 
This not only shows God creati creativity and his wonderful sense of humor, it tells us that he loves each of us individually and distinctively. Now, I probably didn't read the rest of the beginning of that, but I, what it was talking about when he's talking about this in here, each one of us in this room are different. Each one of us have our own personalities. Each one of us, you know, are our own selves, and God made each and every one of us. And he guides and leads us. He's guided and leaded every one of us here tonight in our own way. I didn't want to be here tonight because I had something going on, but I'm here because he led me here. You know, and I just feel like I'm supposed to give this message tonight because that's what God wants me to do. So as we look, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. As it, as it talked about it here, what, what, what does... If a shepherd guides his sheep to lie down in green pastures, not an old dusty dead one, a green pasture, they're fed, they're taken care of, they don't have to worry about anything, you know, he leads me beside the quiet waters. I mean, think about that and think about it as a shepherd leading his sheep. And I, I, I like the way David put this in here, you know, and it's, and we all know David from the Bible and how, you know, he done a lot of stuff that just wasn't great. But he was able to write this psalm. And it's, Ken says here, you know, he, he did that later on probably in his life, um, which he did most of these here. But um, my, Today, it just kept going over and over and over. He restores my soul. Today, is just about over. You know, we all go home and lay our heads down. Tomorrow will be a new day. I'm pretty sure this problem that I have won't look near as big because I know that God's going to guide me through it. He guides me in paths of righteousness. That's verse 3 right there. For his name's sake. You know, God won't guide you down a treacherous path. path. That's, that's not our Father. He won't do that. If, if you're going through a trial, it's the enemy trying to attack. And you have to realize who the shepherd is. Because, not jumping ahead, but he has his way of getting you back on the path of righteousness. And verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. And you have to stop sometimes when you're going through a trial and realize who is with you. Because he will not just let you go through that trial alone. It says your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Looking through this, I like the way Ken, Ken, Ken writes a good book here. It is, it is a great book. Pastor Stan told us about the book when, we, when he first gave it to us. and I mean, he was right. It, it'll speak to you the way he puts these words together. The shepherds carried a rod that was for fighting off 
thieves and robbers and enemies that were, or anything that was going to come hurt his sheep. You know, I'm pretty sure it was a, it was a good head knocker is the way I always think about it. You know, it was something that, that they carried as protection, not just for themselves, but for their sheep that they were caring for. <clears throat> and the staff, from everything that I, I understand, when I was a kid, my mom, I'm going to chase a rabbit, my mom had a, a picture, and it was a picture of Jesus with a bunch of sheep with him. Like just following him. Y'all y'all probably seen the same picture I'm talking about. And it had that staff and I was thinking about it, and it had a crook on it. And some some say that crook was used to bring the sheep back when they stray off. And it says, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Because he brings you back to that safe place where you need to be, where you maybe let your imagination and your mind run away with you with your problem that you have. And there is no problem too big for God. You may sit here and think that, oh, you don't know what I'm going through. But I promise you, there is no problem that is ever too big for God. Because he will always restore your soul. He says it in his word. He will restore your soul. Says it right here. The psalmist says it here, David. We, we get too focused on a problem and not focused on the shepherd. The rod and your staff comfort me. And then what does he say in, in verse uh, 5 right there? You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemy. And when it's, when it's talking about this, it's not just like, how, how many of you like getting invited to somebody's house, especially when they're cooking steaks or something? You know, I mean, that's, you, you, you call me and say, hey, I'm going to feed you a steak dinner. Won't you come on over? And I'm, I'm all right. I'm there. So uh, I love eating a good steak because I, I can't afford them. I eat pork chops. <laughs> But anyway, they're just as good or or chicken. <laughs> I think when we were out with COVID, everybody brought us chicken. <laughs> so I don't want no more chicken. <laughs> but anyway, uh, not to venture off too far. Yeah, that's true. That's amen. I mean, I, I was I was thankful to get the chicken. Don't 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 ever think I wasn't thankful. I was thankful for that because I mean, people took time to come and bless us, and I really appreciate that. I'm 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 all right with the chicken, Danny, but I like a steak better. Uh, <laughs> but when it says you prepare a table before me, this is not just some steak dinner. I mean, a steak dinner is good, but this was a banqueting table. This is this is the idea I want you to get. This was a big deal. And you're his guest. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. My cup overflows. Stood out to me too. I, I'm, I'm not a bragging person. I, I'm not one that's going to flaunt anything that I have around. I've been blessed. My my cup overflows. My wife can tell you there's a, we listen to the porch on the way to church every Sunday morning. And when my song comes on there, I have to turn it up. Everybody has to be quiet. <laughs> I'm drinking from my saucer because my cup is overflowed. And I just cannot, I don't care how silly I sound, I'm going to sing that song. And I'm not a singer. <laughs> but that made me think of that. It made me think of the many blessings that God has poured out on me. And my cup overflows. So you're starting to see why I could not not give this message. Because this message is speaking to me. 
So, in verse 6, or excuse me, yeah, verse 6, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Because a shepherd loves his sheep. A shepherd will lay down his life for his sheep. Like I said, a shepherd will bring them back. His rod and staff comforts them. You have no reason to fear the evil one. Let's think about that context of sheep. Now, he says he, he will leave the 99 to find the one. But think about how much fear that one has away from the 99 because he's not near the shepherd. So when you get away from the shepherd is when that fear takes hold. And just think about that. And how do we get close to the shepherd? This in prayer is how we get close to the shepherd. I'm preaching to myself right here. I'm going to tell you real quick. I am. What's that old saying? When you point fingers, you got four pointing back at you. This is speaking to me so much. Y'all will not realize. My wife knows. But this too shall pass. Like, like I believe that he's going to handle it. Now don't get me wrong. I still have to do my part. But I have to get out of his way for him to work through me. And that's the way it has to be. But surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I like the ending of this psalm where it says, And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So David knew the shepherd. He knew the love the shepherd had for him. He knew what was going to happen. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that picture, like I said, David's pictures himself as a guest in the Lord's house. And I, and I know I've uh, talked about God being our shepherd the Lord is our shepherd. Jesus, our good shepherd. We can't complete this study of Jehovah Raha without talking about Jesus and his role in this. If you would turn over to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Marty, I know I told you to put the whole thing there, but I want you to go down. We're going to start with verse 3. In verse 3 right there, close to the end, it says, He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Verse 4, it says, when he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So the question right there, and I know I'm, I'm talking about myself a lot tonight, but I believe this is of God. If I did not know his voice, Pastor Stan would have got a phone call because I'd have gave up and I'd have tried to figure this problem out on my own. But when I listened to the voice of God telling me 
you need to give this message. There's more than you that needs to hear it. There's somebody else that needs to hear this just as well. And I, I see you there. But learn to listen to his voice. I did not listen to the voice of God before. I learned how to listen to the voice of God. And how do you listen to the voice of God? If I was to listen to Pastor Stan's voice, but I talked at the same time, do you think I would hear much of what he's saying? If I asked him a question and I expected an answer from him, I need to shut my mouth first so I can hear it. So when you, when you talk to God, you have to hush and listen. And it's hard for me because I'm going to tell you, my mind's running constantly from the time I open my eyes to sometimes I'm laying in my bed and I'm, I just finally have to tell myself, hush. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> and I sit there and I'm like, just Lord, speak to me. And next thing I know, my alarm clock's going off. <laughs> but when I'm in prayer and I really want to hear from God, He will speak. When you really want to hear from God, He will speak to you. And I have to go back to, I remember what Mark Green said. Well, what does the voice of God sound like? I think him, Pastor Stan and Dawn was headed to Waxahachie when he asked that question. Or I think Dawn asked that question, right? But uh, it sounds like me, but it doesn't speak like me. Because I'm not going to say anything that smart. <laughs> Rayford, don't start. <laughs> you have to learn when God's speaking to you. And he's never going to steer you wrong. Because like I said... I wanted to go a different route, but I didn't. I went the route God wanted me to go because I've been so disobedient in my life when God tells me to do something that I know now as I'm getting a little older that I need to listen and I need to obey. And that's the toughest part of listening is obeying. So if you would, jump on down to verse 7. See, Jesus was, was telling them this, and, and he was using figures of speech, but they didn't understand what he was telling them. Jesus says, therefore, therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All whoever, who, who, all who've ever come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through, the, through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. You will find your plenty. You will find your pasture. You will be fed if you're going in and out through Jesus. That's the only way to be fed. Now you can feed on something else, but it's not going to be good for you. Of course, we all know what verse 10 says there. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy. Jesus says, I have come that they may now have life and have it to the full. Jesus says in here, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. 
The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. Jesus is saying there, he won't. He says in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Once again, I knew it was God when he was telling me, well, don't call and cancel out tonight. You need to go do it. And I'm not up here doing it in my own strength. There's no way. I rely on the strength of the Lord, and that's the only way I'm, I'm able to do anything, especially His work. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus laid His life down for a lot of us. A lot of us have taken hold of that. A lot of us, sometimes like me, goes through a funk and we forget. We forget who the shepherd is. Or we've gotten a little far away from him and it's hard to hear him. You know, if I was to walk out there in that hall without the mic and try to talk to y'all, y'all couldn't hear me very well. Because I'm away from you. Don't stray away from the shepherd tonight. Is what I'm basically saying. You know. I, I admit I've, I've strayed away at times. And I've had to make my way back. Because I, I know that. It's like a. It's like a bite of a good steak. You get one bite and you want another one. You know, you know, you know you've tasted that it is good. And you, you know your body needs it. Marty, I didn't give you this one. It's Revelations 7, 15 and 17. This is going to be my final one before I close out here. Talking about Jehovah Raha. But I have a question before I read this. Have you spent time in prayer? Have you ever just stopped and just listened for the Father to speak to you? Because He'll guide you through any problem you got. Anything you may be going through, He'll guide you. You turn to Revelation seven fifteen. Real quick. Starting in verses 15, going to verse 17. Therefore, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor scort, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb is, a, is at the center of the throne, will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes that's a good word that's a good word 
I may be a little early, but that's all I got for you tonight. Well, I'm actually right there on time, ain't I? How about that? I'm going to do something I, I normally don't do, but I just feel the Lord's telling me. If any of you is walking through something and you need prayer, I'm here. I'm always here. I just never give the opportunity. I will pray with you. Just let me know. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, Father. Have we been going through the names Lord and these different names show your character Father and Lord you are my shepherd Father you have guided me through what seemed like an impossible task today through problems Lord through trials Father and you're, you're with me you're with me, Lord. Father, you'll, you'll never leave me or forsake me. Father, you won't lead me down a wrong path, Lord. And I just, I thank you for that. I thank you for your guidance. I thank you for your comfort, your peace. Father, as I just thank you for everyone that you, that's gathered here. And Lord, I just ask your protection to be upon them as we leave this place. As they get back home. And Lord, just as they say their prayers tonight. And Lord, they're mindful of you. Lord, speak to them. Let them hear your voice. Father, I thank you for all these things. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.